All right, come on in. All you hockey fans, exhausted from trade deadline day. Welcome, everybody, to our special edition of Trade Deadline Day, Real Kipper and Bourne Show. It's Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, and Jen Rolnick for the next two hours. Special edition, 5 to 7 Eastern, here on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 590, The Fan, and Sportsnet Plus. And whenever you can't get us live, please download on your favorite pod platform and find us. And if you want, give us a text, 590-590. We'll see what we can squeeze in. But I'm not sure what we're squeezing in because we've got uh, Brad Tree Living, general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, in about 20 minutes. We've got Elliot Friedman, who's going to join us at the top of the hour to kind of dissect what the heck happened. And where would Off the Rails Friday be without Doug McClain? Yeah later on in the show. Does it qualify as an off-the-rails Friday if the deadline falls on off-the-rails Friday? I just spent a minute saying, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. And then it's <laughs> because I got uh, my ear pods on and I'm not <laughs> no. plugged into the, the the monitor here. So that, that tells you everything you need to know about off-the-rails Friday, don't you? Yeah, we're off-the-rails. Good. They're also called AirPods, Kipper. They're not AirPods. What did I say? <laughs> AirPods. Can we call them your AirPods? They're AirPods, bud. Get but with the times, okay? AirPods go in your ear. I just added to Off the Rails Friday. <laughs> That's what I did purposely. Did you see uh, that? I see did. how that works? You're nailing it. Crushing it. How many trades, Sammy, did we have today? Uh, lots. Lots of little ones. Uh, do you want me to count them out at live here? Uh, One, two, do we think it's around 20? Sure. That's a, you don't have to count them, Sammy. I want you to call your oh, bluff. You okay, but would you say the best was saved for last? The biggest, the biggest surprise. It seemed like everything was kind of fitting in. There was a couple of bigger names out there still to be played out, including Toffoli going to the Winnipeg Jets, which there's not a person uh, in this country that doesn't like that for the Winnipeg Jets. No kidding. But uh, outside of that, pretty, uh, pretty consistent with... Maybe the, the fillers for teams around the edges. And then, boom, San Jose moves their their prized possession up front, Thomas Hurdle, yep. to like Vegas. And we're like, no, nah, that can't be right. Vegas. Yeah. Vegas, baby. And if I may add to that, uh, Hurdle has been added to LTIR for Vegas, which means they now have $6.75 million in cap space to fit additional call-up. <laughs> they have infinite cap in Vegas. I, I've, they actually have figured out how to play in the NHL without the salary cap. It's like a glitch. They have a, a I don't know, left, right, left, right, start select, ABA. Okay, for it? the record, I really, really like, I like this trade more for San Jose than I do Ooh. Vegas. Tell hmm. me more. Why, why yeah. is that? That's the first time I've heard someone say that. Because San Jose's so bad that you're not going anywhere with Thomas Hurdle. Anywhere. Agreed. So what? Uh, who's who's the centerman they got back? David Enstrom. 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 Which I think has got a lot of upside from what I hear about him. Okay. So it, it fits better for the the rebuild plus the draft picks. It just makes more sense. It does, but I don't like that they retained salary for six seasons. You know what? You got to pay for for the draft picks. You got it. Like you, it's just the cost. Yeah, JB, it's just the cost of doing business. That's all. It's not your money, anyways. It's some rich billionaire that we it's don't not know. The money. I'm worried about his cap space when they do want to compete. But to your point, maybe they think the cap in four years when they're competitive is so high that what's a million bucks? So what exactly? What were the picks? It was a first and a. Sammy, did you have? Do you have it? Yeah, it was a a twenty twenty five uh, first round pick. Yes. And uh, the Golden Knights got a third round pick back as well as a. Is that correct here? A third round pick. Am I looking at that correctly? There's no way. No. Uh, I'll tell you what it is right here. It's, yeah, it, it's, it is. It's uh, it's it's Edstrom and a first round pick. Mm. That's what it is. And. I, I think that's it's it's good just to move on. Yeah, it, for the future. Yeah, you know. So either way, for Vegas, it's it to me is just so 
impressive and what they've done here over the past week. I mean, Anthony Mantha, Tomas Hurdle, and Noah Hannafin have suddenly been added to this team. You're going to get back Mark Stone at the end of the year. You still have Eichel in the mix, yeah. Chandler Stevenson. This decor is loaded. Like, the top of the West is unbelievable. Colorado probably made as big strides as Vegas did, or close to. They're in second, but, I mean, boy, Winnipeg, Dallas, Edmonton, you know, did their work early. It's it's the the top of the West is just loaded. Now, Hurdle is hurt. Hurtle? Hurtle. Right? Yeah. Yes. So... But he's supposed to be back by the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. And I think this played a huge part in this trade is that if you look at this guy's history with knee injuries, Mm -hmm. it goes back to 2014, 2015. I think he had major surgery, had uh, ACL, MCL. Yeah. And then just recently he was out before the All-Star break ended up playing in the all-star break and then comes back. And then if, if you kind of followed that story a little bit, it was like, I decided to have surgery again, Hmm. which meant I'm not sure if he and the sharks were on the same page with, with his knee history. Do you think there was tension with him and the sharks? I get the sense that there is. Yeah. I can't. I'm not here to tell you that I can confirm anything, yeah. but I just get a sense that they were just they were just tired of dealing with uh, constant knee injuries with this guy. Yeah, maybe they're worried he's never going to be the player they thought they were buying. Six more years is scary if you're worried about that. And just to confirm, it is hurdle in a third round pick in 2025 and a third round pick in 2027 to yeah. Vegas. So they got two picks out of it as well, and it's Edstrom, a first-round pick, and 17% of Hurdle's contract. Yeah, paid. part of what like you're he, paying. Yeah, that he's, he's, had, he's, he's had some major injuries with his knees, and I just, I, you know, if, it's great if, if he comes back and he's, he's great and he and Vegas can live happily ever after, but I think it was a concern for San Jose is how That's good how, – how good? How, how safe are these knees right now yeah. moving forward on this contract? Interesting. You know, looking, taking it at face value for the player we know he can be. I mean, he's an elite guy, right? He scored 35-plus in the league. He's big. He's, you know, he, he's a really valued asset for a team that, you know, Vegas needed a little bit. Needed a little bit of help scoring this year, and, and so you love that for them. But certainly if that's a, more of a concern than I had heard previously, that's, that's something to keep an eye on. So how much, I mean, I don't know, I wish I had it in front of him, but like how much are they going to add once the playoffs start? It's got to be close to 20 mil. When guys come back, yeah, Alec Martinez and um, Mark Stone. Stone, Hurdle now. Hurdle will come back. He'll probably come back in the regular season, but yeah, towards the end there, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, they're playing like a $100 million cap. I'm sorry for my Oiler fan friends again. Yeah. They're going to have to go, well, I mean, maybe they're going to slip down to the wild card spot here and you're not going to have to deal with them. You know, Nashville is somehow ahead of them in the standings, which is crazy, but it just, it sucks for a lot of people. I, I mean, I don't mind it. They're using the advantages, I guess, that they have. I, it's hard to kill them for it. No, but no. at the same time, if you're a fan of a team that's going to play them in the playoffs, you are seething yeah. today. Edmonton didn't make a move, Kip. Your thoughts on that, or do you want to go somewhere else? No, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Just saying that there was a sense that, Ken Holland was still looking, but didn't have the sense of urgency when he was able to pick up the the two forwards from Anaheim. Mm-hmm. You know, like I like the Oilers pickups. I think obviously Carrick is a certain type of player that they they like, and Henrique fits a need. But God, this team is so good, so good, and to leave them without really a second line, you know, like they're they're short a guy in the second line. They're probably short a guy, a defenseman. On the first or second pair, depending how you feel about things, and well, you're short a backup goalie. They did get Stetcher for some depth, sure, but okay. not someone that maybe a few Oiler fans were screaming to upgrade from Cody CC. Yeah, so it's very possible. Like they've been a pretty good defensive team, and when Skinner's the good, um, they can outscore a lot of problems too. And like this Oilers team is never one I'm counting out. I've Got my own money on them coming out of the West still. I still believe in them. But, yeah, today I think other teams improved over the last couple of days and, and closed the gap significantly. So we, we saw some significant trades uh, in Winnipeg, or uh, sorry, in uh, Vancouver and Edmonton, but we saw a significant one 
once again uh, from Winnipeg Jets, Tyler Toffoli. There, his name had been out there. There was a sense that Winnipeg was interested, but almost had a feel like, yeah, we've heard that one before on trade deadline, Winnipeg in, and then never closing out. But I, I thought this was a really, really strong move by Shovel Day off to look at the West and go, and I see what's happening here, and I, I, I need more depth. I mean, yeah. The, I think I talked about them not having as much offense. Like The Jets are a team that because they don't have, if you ranked the best 100 forwards in the NHL, you know, you might have Shifley in the top 30, Ehlers, Connor, whatever you think, but they don't have any top 20 guys. And so they're going to have to have scoring throughout the lineup, and boy, this is a big addition for them. It's actually tough to figure out where to put all of their players, given how many forwards they have. They have as good a full 12 as any team in the NHL with Toffoli. So um, excited to see where he fits in and, you know, what sort of impact he can have. Chevy's added some good guys over the years, you know, like yeah. Niederreiter at the deadline last year. Nemesnikov was helpful, do you, too. Do you think are you surprised no first in that trade to get him? Was it no. a 2024 20, third and a second yeah. in 25? No, no, I'm not. Because, you know, you see the price of Sean Monahan that goes for a first earlier on, and then you yeah. get to Foley on, dra- on the day for... Tra- traditionally, centermen have always carried yeah, a enough. higher uh, premium. Yeah, that's fair. Just uh, to me, that's one of the guys that was still left heading into today mm-hmm. that I figured yeah. would have been part of and a... You know, would have got a first. I, I yeah. got to... I got to... I get the sense, too, is like... Gary Bettman going out there last week to talk about uh, wanting the community to get reengaged, corporate getting more involved. To fully adds to that. Come on, we're doing our part yeah. here. So let's go. A uh, building needs to be filled. Renewals need to come in. Yeah. We're doing our part. I, I think it's a strong message from For the sure. Winnipeg Jets. We are stacked, and we are right in the mix to be a potential Stanley Cup finalist from the Western Conference. Like, they are, they're, you know, they're not, I, I don't see a world where they're not one of the favorites to me. Like, I know it's a tough slog in that mm. central division, considering what, what Colorado did, considering what Dallas does, getting tan ever, whatever, but they could beat either of those teams in a playoff series. They could go to the final. So you're right, Kipper. It's a good message to send. Just so solid. Like, you feel like out of their 10 or 11 guys who can shoot it in the net, someone's going to have a good playoffs. Yeah, you know, like a couple of guys are going to get you enough goals. And then with Hellebuck, you just feel like they can compete. They added Colin Miller as well uh, on the back end. He's, he was in New Jersey this year, plays 16 minutes a night. He's got a lot of uh, playoff experience, went to the cup final with Vegas in 2018. Um, mm-hmm. Just shores things up in the back end. I, I still would have liked to seen a little something else there, but... I think a lot of teams feel that way. It's, it was tough to make moves. In about seven or eight minutes, we're going to welcome in Brad Tree, living general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. A couple of pickups, depending if you're a Leaf fan. I'm not sure how excited you are, but a necessity if you want to take a long run in the playoffs is that depth. So he's he was able to solidify a couple of pieces, including uh, Joel Edmondson, who did not play last night in Boston. But uh, do you guys want to go just winners and losers here for the next little while and you want to include what happened in the last few days or is there something specific today that you still want to get to well i think it's what's a i don't i just loser i don't want to call kyle dubas a loser again here but i didn't love that trade but if we want to get into that stuff we can i don't know if you guys talked about that today on on the show i just felt like that was the biggest one and it feels like we haven't really addressed it no so i think that probably we should go there um yeah, so what are your thoughts on the return for Gensel, Kip? It's kind of tricky now because we're a day like the, the, this or days towards the trade deadline, you're you're also talking about some, some assets that you haven't really been privileged to follow or hear enough information on. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah, Gensel was the biggest prize that you had out there mm-hmm. in the last – two weeks, a month. I don't know how far you want to go back. Yeah. Uh, Good player. But the one thing that I know about Pittsburgh is they're not big and they're not tough and they're not heavy. And everything that tells me from bunting, going to Pittsburgh to these, these picks, like there's nobody six, three and above. They're just 
they're almost like cut from that same Toronto Maple Leaf. Let's just get the most skilled guys here. It looks like he's, he's taking a blueprint a little bit off of that. You know, I if I were in his shoes and looking at the age of the core guys <clears throat> and thinking when you want to be good is now, basically, and you don't want to lose Gensel for nothing, Dubas lost a ton of players for nothing when he was with the Maple Leafs. I get the idea of seeking out prospects and not picks. You know what I mean? Like, try to get guys that maybe they can help you. I don't know if it's next year, but at least the year after that. Bunting is the guy that you take to Crosby and go, he's a 60-point guy. Like, we didn't get you nothing in return, and you kind of hope that you've appeased the team in the short term, still feel like you're competitive, and one of these guys comes through. You can say, all right, we turned a guy into someone, but... I have talked to a number of scouts like you probably have, and none of the people I've talked to have been like, oh, I really love this kid they got. Like, they all sound like lottery tickets, you know, be kind of B-level prospects, and who knows? So. Sammy, do we have Sid Crosby's uh, post-game comments from last night? Now that we're on the subject of Pittsburgh, we, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind uh, bringing that up because he was not happy it man. was... It was almost painful, JB, yeah. to listen to Sidney Crosby. We do have it if you want. Yeah, you want absolutely. To it. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go to Sidney Crosby last night after a very tough loss to the Washington Capitals. Not going to be any more. What, what are your thoughts? I mean, he's a great player, great teammate. Um, you know, a friend, I think, uh, did everything he possibly could, you know, in his time here. Um, you know, just a uh, privilege to play with him for for the course of that time and, uh, you know, some great memories. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was just a uh, privilege, that's all I can say. What are you thinking about the rest of this season? I, mean, I know you're trying to get into the playoffs and win every game, but also management sends this message. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's yeah. probably a better question from them, for them, yeah. So did any of that I agree distraction from playing to what I don't know. happened tonight? That was his comment. I don't know. Well, it's, you know, how do you feel about, yeah. you know. This is, and he it, said, I don't know. Yeah, ask them. Ask them how, you know, they can tell you they feel like we're quitting. And so I feel not great, Bob. I, it's just on the surface, a trade for the best guy available at the deadline for a former Sue Greyhound, three skilly guys and no first round pick. <laughs> yeah. It's not a great it's not a great. Like you everything's great. You didn't get a like. You got a first round pick if Carolina makes it through the absolute meat grinder of the of the Eastern Conference, which they haven't shown a propensity to do. It's just how do you not get a first guarantee first rounder in that trade? That's I think baffling. it's funny the way that they listed the trade. Eh, that they got a first and a fifth in the deal. Like that was the way it was announced. First and a fifth, which reverts to a second and no fifth if they don't make the Cup final. Yes, which is. You know, a very PR way to advertise it. That we got a first and a fifth in this deal, mm. unless yeah. a likely thing. Unless, happens. unless <laughs> yeah. the super unlikely thing, like less than ten percent chance, yeah, thing happens exactly. and it's a second. I thought that was a bit of a sales. But I, I do think it's a great ad for Carolina to get Gensel, and Gensel's an excellent player. And you know what? And you guys, I uh, I like the the Kuznetsov thing because I know Kuznetsov is a complete flyer, but as someone who once upon a time got sober. Um, the idea of like wanting to come out and be your best self and committing to this like new like focus and energy and whatever, just knowing how I felt. I'm not, I don't know Kuznetsov situation, not that far removed from the player assistance program, but uh, for a flyer for three and a half mil or whatever, they're going to yeah, pay him this see, year next. That, that flyer scares me. Yeah, it does. And I don't, I don't think it, it enough was spent on the fact that this guy had just been coming out of a NHL player uh, association uh, assistant program, mm -hmm. which doesn't really tell you much. It protects right. whatever issues he's had. But the man has had some issues. For sure. My first thought is coming out of the program, and listen, I mean, I'm talking hey, to yeah. an expert here. All good. Okay. And is... Carolina, are you putting him in the best position now of strength to mm -hmm. come in? Like, did four weeks in this program, he was in February 5th. Now he's going to resume his career. 
Like, are you? Well, how big of a flyer is it? that you're coming out of a program and you're ready to go and you won't have some pitfalls that you had before. Now, I've been on enough clubs where I have seen certain guys have some issues off the ice, come into the dressing room, look us in the eyes and say, boys, I'm going to be better. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about me. And I'm going to do everything I can. And I'm good. And I'm changed. I'm a changed man. And guess what? Doesn't happen. You know, uh, I think we can go deeper on that. We do have our guest. Okay, yep. let's let's welcome in Brad Tree Living, Toronto Maple Leafs General Manager. Uh, Brad, thanks for doing this. I know it was a real busy day here, but uh, uh, your thoughts about uh, the, the trades that you made, including uh, Connor uh, uh, Dewar uh, from Minnesota for a fourth. Just your overall thoughts today. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. Um, yeah, it was. I would call it Nick a, a sort of a usual trade deadline, you know, day and 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 you know, leading up to it. Obviously, you saw lots of deals take place probably in the last couple of days leading up to the deadline. Uh, I don't know if it was that busy for us today. You know, we you, you kind of spent the the weeks leading up to the deadline to you know certain things that you you're may try to accomplish or trying to accomplish and have a good understanding of uh of what you may or may not be able to get done um as far as the acquisition today of connor dewar you know as we looked at our group here and, and identified some needs you know at the end of the day you know we had some some needs if you will going into to to the team or going into the deadline as we watched our team and you know the reality was we weren't going to be able to fill everything that we we wanted to, um, and certainly in in some cases that a you know whether it be you know the things I always look at is is you watch your team, uh, you determine where your needs are, then you look at it as is what you need a available, um, you know what's what's the cost, what's the acquisition cost, and see. Um, you know, do you have the cost to, to, to get the acquisition done? Um, so as we looked around, one of the things that we wanted to try to add to our group is um, add a some depth at center, somebody who's defensively responsible um, is, is a good penalty killer. You know, one of the areas of our team right now is our penalty kill that needs to get better. Um, you know, we, we we're not able to airlift uh, a bunch of new penalty killers in. So number one, we've got to we've got to tighten things up from a structural standpoint. But B, if there's an area to tweak ourselves personnel-wise, it's an area we want to do. Uh, Connor's a guy that came in from a cost from a from a cost fit in terms of a cap hit, uh, a real competitive player. Um, you know, a lot of people may not be familiar with him. Um, excellent penalty killer, has some flexibility in terms of positional utility. Can play center, can play the wing, um, and like I said, I like. You know he's, he's he's got some grease to him, so um, we're excited to add him. It gives us some depth in the middle. Like I said, the guy who's got a skill set in terms of penalty killing, defensively responsible. So uh, glad to get him as part of the group here today. Brad, how much is what you did here and what GMs generally do with the deadline reflective of your belief in the team going into the trade deadline? Like you know, you know, you look at some top teams and you say, okay, they really believe in them. They're going to make the the big swing here. On the other hand, you know, they I guess you could say that you believe so much in the team, you didn't want to make a big swing. How much does it reflect belief in team? What a GM does? Oh, well, you're always watching, and what I say, Justin, is your team. You know, you take your cues from your team. Um, now, there's 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 guys that. You, know, you just go back and, and 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 look at teams that have won a Stanley Cup, and there's teams that have won a Stanley Cup that that do very little at the trade deadline. There's there's been teams that have won a cup that you know have done things at the deadline. So you know I think when you're trying to add and you're giving up assets to your team, you're trying to give yourself a better chance. Uh, you know certainly certainly your comfort level in giving up a assets. Um, not only I don't necessarily say it's not a, a a reflection of a belief in your team, but you also look at where your your situation is. What is your, you know, in terms of future assets? What is your 
asset base look like, whether it be young prospects or or picks and those types of things. So, you know, certainly when you, you know, the message I gave to our team leading up to the deadline is I do believe in this group. We, you know, our plan is not to subtract if, if, if possible from the group, and we'd like to add to the group. Um, and then you go from there and there's got to be a fit and a match. And, and like I said, the things I talked about earlier in terms of uh, a match from availability and then, and then the ability to acquire um, those players. But certainly you always take your cues from your team um, and where they sit and, and, and before you, you address anything on the deadline. We're talking to Brad Tree Living, Toronto Maple Leaf general manager. Uh, Brad, I know last night you didn't get the results that you wanted against the Boston Bruins. I found it kind of interesting that after a very spirited game, at least within the physicality department, Boston went out and got Patrick Maroon. Uh, what did what did you learn about your team last night, and what did you learn about what it's going to take? Because we all think this is heading towards a, a, a round one matchup. I think 75% were the odds that you and the Boston Bruins will be their uh, puck drop? Yeah, I, I, I do think, Nick, you got to be careful of just, you know, focusing on one team. Obviously, you know, we look at the, <laughs> I get I get handed odds and, and all sorts of numbers each day about, um, you know, probabilities and whatnot. Uh, listen, Boston, Boston's a real good team. You know, they've been a real good team for a long time. Um, they're playoff hardened. Um, you know, it was a good atmosphere in there last night. They were honoring the, the 2011 Stanley Cup team. There was lots of juice in the building. Um, you know, there's some real good things from last night, and obviously some areas that we got to clean up. I think, you know, we we I liked I liked the competitive nature of our team last night. If you talk about things that I liked, I liked the competitive. You know, I thought we were real competitive physically. Um, I thought we were really engaged in the game. We made some critical errors. You know. Uh, I, I disagree with the five on three call, but you know, we were 30 some odd seconds from having a kill the, the, the penalty killed. We don't get a clear. It's in the back of our net. Um, we turn a puck over. It's two, nothing. Um, we got ourselves back into the game at two, one. Um, you had some chances to tie it up. You know, we have, we have a, we have a good, real good chance to tie it up at two, at two, two puck comes down the other night and it's, or comes down the other way. 3-1. So, you know, one of the big takeaways I take out of that game is, number one, we've got to make sure that we're emotionally invested, emotionally and physically. It's an, an area that we've really tried to, to push in our group since, you know, since since we've gotten here, is talking a lot about, you know, the game within the game and, and the emotional and physical investment that's take that's required um, at the most important time of the year. I think I think we were we were invested in that game. But also, when you're playing a good team like Boston, you know they don't beat themselves. You know they don't they don't make the the, the critical errors. And when you look back, and, and the game is a game of errors, but we made critical errors that I thought they capitalized on. And those are errors you can't you know you can't make at playoff time. You got to be care. You got to be good with your discipline. Um, your special teams have to be good. Um, you've got to you've got to toe that line in terms of. Um, you know, making sure that you're disciplined, but that you've got to be, you've got to be ultra competitive. And uh, so that's the lesson that, that we have, that's got to stay with us. We can't beat ourselves. We can't, you know, we can't make critical errors that, that gives a, a real advantage to an experienced team like Boston. So, um, you know, these nine, these next 19 games, number one, they're, they're there. We've got to qualify for the playoffs. We've got to earn ourselves a position to, to be a playoff team. And we got to use these 19 ga- games to get our, t- our our game in a position uh, where it can have success in the playoffs. Brad, uh, you guys added some muscle. Not that Dewar is qu- a big guy, but yeah, feisty fella. And you've uh, a couple of D-men in that obviously, uh, you know, big, heavier type guys. You know, how much can this, I guess you talk about physicality and competitiveness and how much of it has to come from your core guys, from Matthews, from Marner, from Nylander, the guys who are on the ice the most for you in playoffs, and how much can you lean on the guys around them to be that sort of physical edge to, to help them through? Well, to me, it's all, of, I mean, you have to be emo- physically, emotionally invested. I mean, it's not, and that, it's not meaning about running guys through the wall or anything like that, but, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're fighting for every inch of ice when it comes to playoff time. And, 
you know, at the end of the day, you're always led by your top people. You know, they have to lead the way for you. And, and you know, that's, that's, just, that's just the way it is. When you look at playoff series, yes, you know, age-old age old adage is, you know, your top guys sometimes saw off and, and it's the depth that can push you through. And I, and I totally agree with that. But in terms of leading the way, your, your top people have to do it. And, uh, you know, as I, I talked to our group, you know, leading up to this deadline is, number one, I said, I believe in you. Um, we're going to do what we can to add to this group. You know, we're not, we're going to try to help ourselves and, and, and add pieces and not take pieces away. But at the end of the day, you know, the answers are, are right here in, in this room right now. And they, they're the ones that have to really, they're the ones that are going to do the heavy lifting. You know, you can, you can have support around them and we need to support them. Um, but that they're, you know, they're the top guys and, and they're top, you know, these aren't just good players. They're top players in the league. Um, and they've, you know, they've, they've gone through playoff success and I haven't been or I know they've gone through some playoff heartbreak here um, and I haven't been here, but, you know, it's just, those are each one's a, is, is, is another, you know, just another opportunity to get better. And, and until you until you break through, everybody says you haven't broken through. The list is long of guys that you know that didn't get through till they finally got through. And and so that's you know ultimately our 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 our, our big boys have got to lead us. Um, and then the rest of the group has got to be there in lockstep to support them and do their job. This isn't as I as I as I said on day one coming here. This this isn't about one, two, or three, or four guys, and we just put everything on their shoulders. Um, they've got to lead the way and the rest of the group has got to be real good support and push and, and pull and, 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 and make sure that they're, um, they're doing everything to, to help, you know, support, support our top people. And, uh, uh that's just the way it's got to be. And, uh, I've got all the faith in the world in them. Uh, and like I said, we've, we've added some reinforcements here. Um, and, uh, I know our group's excited. They're excited about the challenge ahead. We're excited as well as uh, trade deadline's over and we get uh, towards a Stanley Cup uh, playoff. Uh, I know it's a long day for you, Brad, but we really appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for doing this. Okay, thanks, fellas. Have a good night. Thanks, you too. Brad Tree, living general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Listen, they, they can work around the edges all they want. If you're not even coming remotely close to matching Pasternak and Marchand's intensity from Nylander, Marner, Matthews, Tavares, they're cooked. It's actually crazy watching that game last night and uh, hearing different people's takeaways from it. I know, Sammy, you've got takeaways wow. from it too. But I, I got to say, I thought that team, the Leafs, worked, competed, took it to the Bruins, were in their face, and then there were the guys you just mentioned. So yeah. I thought, as a whole, the team was really good. The guys who you you're talking about and why I asked Tree about them, I thought they were they they weren't up to the level last night. And it could be a back to back. It could be sick. It could be. It could be. It could be. But it wasn't there last night. I mean, how do they have the bubonic plague? How sick are they? Like I, they're out there playing. I, I I think there should be. It's the NHL. You're making eleven. You should be held to a certain standard. If you're sick and you can't play, you can't play. But yeah, it, it's a, it's a tough visual for me that we're in the third version of a bottom six or different guys or whatever you want that are on one year contracts. And they're the ones trying to be the guys that are lighting a fire under them. Tyler Bertuzzi's beating the crap That's out of why people. They get those guys. Cause they Dude, don't have it at Dom the core. Domi's trying to fight Marshawn. Domi's beating the crap out of Charlie Coyle. But that's, but like, those are afterthoughts, right? Those are players. Well, I don't know what, what was the score when when Domi went after yeah, four one, four one. Four, yeah. exactly. So yeah. it's message sending, but that's not where the games won no, and but lost. You it's... just you all these guys come in here, Kipper and Barney, and they all come in and they get a taste with this core, and they leave. Felino, you know Ryan uh, O'Reilly, Luke Shen, and Achari, I guess. Yeah. But now it's we're watching it happen again, where it's these guys who are dog fighting in the front of the net. Bertuzzi's dropping the gloves. Domi's getting into it every game. 
91's just it, watching it, scrums. It it's doesn't like, matter if those guys aren't it, engaged. That's like what they I mean. That's, that's the it's problem. Irrelevant. That has always been the problem. It's the core of the problem. And we always dance around it. But that's the core of the issue. Like, Willie Nylander, like, you're the last man back. It's... Is, they, is that just not the unwritten rule here, JB, where you just do not dance? You know how it is, Kip. There's like a couple guys, a team, maybe 10 guys in the league who you say have added up there, you know, roll the dice. Mm. And Willie's close to that group, I, I if not in I didn't it. I not play with many coaches that would just do hey, that. Try like, the toe drag uh, at the blue line. Alex Kovalev and... Uh, hey, try to tell Connor McDavid he can't do it. And, yeah. You well, know, I mean, like, I was saying, Willie's but, but, close to that. I That, but, that doesn't upset Connor me last night. Connor, it's not good. But. Connor, when he when he's turning up towards the blue line, he knows that he's protecting the puck and he's going to skate it back, or he's going to make it a nice outlet. And pass. this is fine, but we're talking trends. Like, is this something like Willie does this a lot? He doesn't do that. I, has he done it again this year? Like to me, that's not a trend that I worry about necessarily. What I worry unless, about... Unless it's game six or game seven. Sure. Yeah, I wish it wasn't against the Bruins still. That's fair. Hey, listen, it's fair. It's not a good play. They shouldn't do it. Thank the coach yes. should tell him, don't do that. But to me, I see Austin Matthews going to finish checks and stutter stepping first and kind of pulling up. And, you know, I, I see guys in the scrums that are, as you mentioned, not those guys. Well, is, is, it's not... Can they play? Can, no, like, can, they can't. Can Matthews play that style last night and still be the 70 goal scorer that you know we think he's heading towards he wasn't anywhere near the middle of the ice the entire night none of the according to sport logic the leafs had one high danger chance at, at even strength and they scored was it they scored oh at even strength i was gonna say yeah, they so scored physical it. for those guys every time the temperature gets ramped up and it's intense and physical and it's loud and all of a sudden it's a playoff feel you know, the, uh, they some pull up. There's some, yeah. They're a little nervous. Maybe. Well, the big, it, it scares the hell out of you that the two s superstars, I guess, I guess Marshawn's a superstar and Pasternak superstar for the Bruins just can't wait to play the Leafs. That's their favorite thing to do. And the Leafs hate playing the Bruins. And those two things, every time you watch, uh, so they hate it shows. The, the, the Panthers and yes. the Bruins. Yeah. Now, they do. Um, I don't feel like you guys did about the game on mass last night. Like in talking to you about it, like yeah. I thought the Leafs were, you know, again, back to back situation. I thought they were very competitive. The yeah. Bruins got 23 shots. Wool didn't make saves. Typically, you get a couple of saves. Matthews and Martin to play better. Like it's not tough to envision a game where that's well, a closer so now, game. I, when was the last time we saw a game like that out of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Like, and that was the most right? physical, physical, emotional the fights, game. The yes, but emotion. It's all the. Guys that, quote-unquote, don't matter as much. But you're not going to have Matthews and Marner fighting anyway. I just want them mad. I want Marner to celebrate his goal like Connor Geeky celebrated his goal. I want them I want to be angry guys. one time. Yeah. yeah, maybe wrong guys to get angry. They're skill, skill, skill. Yeah. I know. Right? Well, there's lots, of guys, do, there's for there's lots of guys that do both, boys. There's a challenge. <laughs> maybe... Connor Dewar can come in and oh, yeah. rattle him up a little bit. He's a needle I mover. I free like Connor Dewar. <laughs> watched him fight well, four times. Okay, that's year. enough. What's his, right. what's his hometown again? He's from the Paw. The Paw. Yeah, man. Manitoba. 5'10 yeah. out of the Paw. All right. Got to be tough. Grabby. You want to go to a break? Yeah, let's go to a break. We'll do game time. Okay, plenty back. more still on this trade deadline, including Elliot Friedman at the top of the hour and Doug McClain. Back after these words. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. Trade deadline day. Big names? No. Well. And not so big names. <laughs> um, I just, before we get to game time here, saw this tweet from Greg Wyshynski. He said, Vegas general manager Kelly McCrimmon said, Mark Stone has lacerated spleen. It will miss the rest of the regular season. And it's unknown how much time he will miss after that. It's impossible to know what the timeline is. Where's my camera? Could it be but six weeks? Fingers crossed. <laughs> if everything goes well, uh, we could have I a wonder, very. I wonder what the timeline is. Very. That spleen becomes unlacerated right around springtime. I got I got in trouble yesterday for encouraging HIPAA violations oh on boy. the air. So. so no comment on you? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's game time presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds. Find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, before I get to the games, there's four games on trade deadline day. Do you want none? 
Yeah, was that, that's always been a thing. It's been a popular conversation. Do you agree with that? Do you care? Listen, there could be more action two nights before, three that's nights G- before. That's a GM doing it anyway. Right? Game you, game. Think, you think they're all sitting around watching us, right? What do you mean? TV made it what it is. Right. Before it would have been throughout the day, like you get a 10 second update. And then you go about your day. Would you have always known as a player when deadline was, though? Oh, yeah. Like, even. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you're like, you know, phone call, no phone call. Yeah. Don't have my cell phone with me. Yeah. Yes. It was, it's nervous times yeah. for, for a lot of players. Yeah. So, uh, having said all that, the Winnipeg Jets tonight visit the Seattle Kraken. And to me, it's a really good number for the Jets just to win. What minus 120 money line, I feel like they're going to be very inspired mm-hmm. by another addition. And I'm, Foley's not going to suit up tonight or whatever, but just the fact that they made another big trade, they're a much better team than Seattle. They're looking to get into the top spot in that Western Con- in that Central Division and stay there. I uh, I love the Winnipeg Jets minus 120 in Seattle tonight. All right. That is a, uh, I would even call that a lock for me. Uh, and the other games tonight, it's Dallas Stars, Anaheim. Not going to do anything with that. Minnesota visiting Colorado. Speaking of two teams heading in two different directions here. Uh, Winnipeg just, I mean, sorry, uh, Minnesota just stripped down. And the other one I'm looking at, this is a weirdly short number to me. The Detroit Red Wings are in Arizona. They're only minus 135. Mm -hmm. Not sure why that is. A little bit fishy to me. But give me the Detroit Red Wings at minus 135 over the Arizona Coyotes tonight at Mullet Arena. All right. The Avalanche. Trennan. Duhame. Yeah, middle stat. <laughs> okay. Hey, by the way, Walker. you see, you see uh, Bo Byron la- or, uh, last night? Bo Byron? That's who they traded? Yeah. Bowen Byron. Yeah, Bowen. Bowen Byron. Bowen. Bowen Byron. Yeah. Just snap one under Can the I bar tell for you? Buffalo. That, that, Good hockey player. That's the best trade. For Buffalo. No. Period. 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 You're not Most a middle impactful. stat guy. Most no. impactful? Best trade. He has a chance to be a legitimate top I, pair I, guy. I think he's... He's got a chance to be but a star. Doesn't he, it feel redundant with Power and Dahleen there? Like, like where is he going to get all the... I, yeah, I know they're all three or left-handed shots, but I'm sure somebody can play the, the right side. Yeah, I, I just think, like, for power play time, like, this guy feels like, oh, I'm stuck behind Makar my whole career, and they're like, here. Listen, here's, here's two Dahleen and Power. I, I think forwards are a dime a dozen compared to a very good D. Look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. They've been looking... For how long since Borea Salming? Since as good as Byron? <laughs> Morgan Riley, we like, but is Morgan Riley well, a number one defenseman? Yes, but yep. that's not the no, question. No, 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 no. He's on, not. He's a two or three. Well, no, no, no. He's definitely a number one. He is a you number think, one defenseman on a good National League hockey team. But is he on a Stanley Cup team? Well, like, is I mean, he. There's is two he, different conversations. Is he one of the best defensemen in the league? Maybe not. But is he a number one defenseman? Yes, because default See, I, is the number I, one defenseman on a team. I would have. I'd, I'd have another. I need another one A with him. Mm-hmm. Like, They've always needed that kid for this whole look era. At, last night, everybody's watching the Boston Bruins against Toronto. Lindholm's not even in the lineup. That guy's twenty four minutes. That guy's a, a beast out there. Okay, and now it's Charlie McAvoy and him against Morgan and who? Who's backing Morgan up? Um, let me. Uh, wrap so up that, game I'm down. just saying. So when you get a chance to get a, a, a defenseman like Bowen. It's like, yeah, go get them. Mm. Uh, that was Game Time, presented by Bet365. Visit the app, latest odds, and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, i got to ask you, Kipper. This is a... Did Marshawn do that on purpose last night? On nice the... No, there's no way. There's, there's no, no way. way. No, um, okay, there's no <laughs> way that you can track no. that from where he came from. And if I'm not mistaken... Charlie Coyle was between the two of them, and mm-hmm. it was. But once you're into a, uh, I can't, uh, no, realize no, you're going to run into. Once someone. you're into like that window where it's like I'm not slowing down, and I'm going to drop my shoulder, and you're going to take the brunt of this. He's going to elevate his elbow into his head. Yeah. Whatever the case is, Sammy. You know what? That's the game, bud. Okay, that's know, the game. I... He, whatever it is, whether he did it on purpose or didn't, okay. is irrelevant. What mattered was. He masked it around a play on the ice that says, hey, boys, 
big fish sometimes eat the little fish and move on. Brad Marchand is the, like okay. Pavel Datsuk of deception, except when it comes to hurting people like, by accident. Do you, do you I, think he should? You think it he bothers should be, me? He when, should fight when he does stuff like that. Like when 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 Max Domi goes up to him and asks him to fight when you're up four one and your yeah, building's rocking. I, I disagree. Why, why doesn't he have to fight, Kim? I, I, because you don't have to fight. You can. A guy like that can call his shots or his terms. Okay, I'm with you, Sammy. No, I yeah. just, I, I feel like. I think it would be nice if he did, but it, at the end of the day, I guess he doesn't care do about you his want? He knows if, his if you're Montgomery is. or any other coach with your front line guy, do you want a Max Domi taking you off the ice or taking free shots at your head? I don't want that. Uh, I don't want it. I, I'm, I'm just, sorry. I think and yeah, a, he's dirty, and it'd be nice if someone gave it to him every once in a yeah. while. But I gotta tell you, he's not. Uh, he's he's at the point where he can, he can dictate. I didn't get any texts from Leafs fans after he cross checked uh, McCabe. Cross checked him in the awesome. chin last night. No one texted me and said he shouldn't have done that. I didn't get that text. He, from he also speared uh, McCabe in the gonads. That's why. He, oh, McCabe but he's been just, doing it for his whole yeah, career. Yeah, that's why like, he loses the benefit right? of the doubt. I, I mean, think it's a tough visual for the Bruins captain. To do be doing this multiple times in a game, lying on the ice when he's screaming at everybody and running around like a chicken with his head cut off. I bet his fans is they love it. They go, yeah. he knows what he's doing. I, he's making many, some Leafs. Fans how many times have right I now. said to you too this is, that if he was a Leaf, he would be yeah. my by far favorite Which player in the history of the game? You can't recognize that this yeah, is part of just, his game. But if I was, a, if I was a Leaf fan, I would probably say that he should have fought Domi last night. If yeah. he was on the Leafs, it's like it's a tough look. But they beat him. Of course they and, did. And if he got a couple shots in. But he in. also took a headshot at one of the Leafs' young guys and knocked him out with a concussion. Yeah. Well, I mean, not a concussion. He's going to play it or whatever, but it's, he yeah. left the game. I don't know. Just thought maybe he was eligible to fight. It's a valid concern. Marner lip, limped off the ice a little bit when he missed yeah. his net. What happened there? Yeah. Didn't like that. No. I mean, look, they lose any of those guys. It's wow. high night. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you know, and, like you can't yeah, lose I, any I, of the court I wouldn't court. expect Marner to play tomorrow night. Oh, really? Harden? You think it's something? Uh, be be careful. That's all. You think he's not gonna play? I don't know. Okay. I'm just. I had heard that there might be a little bit of a concern uh, about him. How big of a concern? Would you relax? He could use a rest anyway. He could use a rest. They can all use rest. Okay. Austin's got the plague. Mitch has a broken Would leg. I relax? No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Relax. <laughs> I sound like my wife right now. Yeah. Relax. Um, <laughs> The uh, you know what? Hockey is so hard. Why did you just shoot in that net? Hockey is hard, it is hard. You couldn't make the decision when we watch, like, yeah, you watch from afar and you're sitting on your couch and you're eating your chips, but like, Hmm. pucks are bouncing, they're rolling, and you know, how it fell on his stick. You don't, you don't have to apologize for the guy. No, I'm I'm just saying, yeah, he should have shot it, but. I, I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah. There had to have been some reason why he delayed. That's Hockey, all I'm saying. Yeah. I think it's just hockey's hard. Yeah, well, I think he thinks the goalie's going to come diving yeah. across and he can wrap it. Yeah, or yeah w- and, whatever. Yeah. He just he just didn't didn't feel it was the right time. <laughs> a little double which yeah, he's yeah. regretting today. That was the turning point in the game because they were playing pretty well. They were coming a bit, and if that goes in the nets, two two, different game, and then what happens happens. But anyways. All right, still said, plenty to get into. We said we were going to talk about the Leafs. <laughs> this has been the Leafs hour. We got Elliot Friedman. Is there anything left out of Elliot? He's going to come in here, and he's going to look like he's just been through the ringer. Well, he has been. Got lots to ask him about. Plenty. And then also Doug McClain on Off the Rails Friday. Oh, he's just been stewing all day watching these trades. We'll get his thoughts as well. Don't go away. There's plenty more on The Real Kipper and Born Show. It's all national on The Real Kipper and Born Show. We are in Sportsnet. Sportsnet 590, the fan. Sportsnet Plus. This hour of Real Kipper and Born brought to you by Bet365. Nick Kiprios, Justin Born, Sammy McKee. Not too far off away. And let's bring in our insider who had a tremendous day today, Elliot Friedman. From Hockey Night in Canada, 32 Thoughts. Frege. Kipper. Out of Borny. all the trade lo- Regional panel out of day. all the trade deadline days you've done, this was another one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, it was busy. You know, there's always one that comes out of nowhere. And that was the I heard Vegas was doing something big. I, I but I had no idea 
it was going to be that. It's very seldom, and we like to think and we know that we've got the best insiders in the country, led by you. Hurdle's name never came up. How, it, how often has that ever happened where a name's not on anybody's trade board? It's just boom. That's rare. Like, for example, I think yesterday, the one that kind of came out of nowhere was Byram for Middlestat, but you knew there was a chance that both those guys could be traded, mm -hmm. right? So Hurdle was playing when San Jose came through Toronto, and we asked him, and he said, I I'm going to wait to the end of the season before I make any decisions. Couture said the same thing. So, Nick, you're right. Like, he was nowhere, Bill. And plus, he's hurt. So I never even thought right. of that that was going to be the guy. Like, I, I really thought, like I said, I I was racking my brain all day on what it could be that Vegas was doing. And you're right. I, I never even saw it. I never heard Hurdle. Never saw it coming. Was there a team out there today that you heard was involved in a lot that didn't? Boston. They didn't get what they wanted. They didn't quite no, pull the trigger. Bo Boston, you could tell, and I watched a little bit of Don Sweeney's availability, and he wouldn't answer any questions about Allmark and well, what yeah, exactly happened there. Well, yeah, that's an interesting there. one. So what happened there? They, it sounds like he maybe had a deal to L.A. possibly, was asked to wave, didn't want to wave. Well, I, all I can tell you about that is is that he has a half-league no trade, and I'd heard he was not willing to change it in season. Now, did he... He, he didn't have L.A. on. He had L.A. on the I, I'm not going list. Uh, that, 16 that, teams, I heard. The, he has half the league. Yeah. And, like, I don't know that the L.A. I'm not saying the L.A. thing is wrong. I'm just saying I don't know that it's yeah. true yet. Mm -hmm. But there was definitely somewhere that they tried, they thought about sending him, and he made it very clear that if they're not on my list, I'm not going. But Nick and Justin, I heard there was an Eastern team that was that took a long look at Allmark. Uh, like, I think Boston had a deal going with another Eastern team, and I think it was goalie and defenseman Boston and potentially defenseman coming back um, to the Bruins. Mm -hmm. I haven't pinned it down yet. I, I don't know what it is, but I, there was something else, and I don't know if that one broke up. I don't know if that one broke up because Allmark had him on the list or the deal just broke up. Yeah. But there was something in the Eastern Conference, too, for sure. The goaltending... Market shrunk, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but we still saw Jake Allen leave the Montreal Canadiens to New Jersey. Yep, yeah. and I'm going like, where's the sense of urgency now, New Jersey? They got Kacken and Ed Allen. They're like, we fixed it. <laughs> well, like, what, they, what, 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 allows to, what it allows them to do is number one, I what this says to me, and you're right, Nick. It's late. But what it says to me is that, A, they think they they might be worried that these two kids are getting shell-shocked in the NHL. Stas so, okay. yeah. now we're going to Now we're going to protect them with 20 games. So let's right, take like, our, what, our 13th pick overall and bring in Allen so we can turn it into, what, 16, 17, 18th overall? Come on. It's a, it's a test drive. There's no question it's a test drive for him and the other guy. Like, I got to say, this year, the other guy statistically, Kakanen, He's, like, goal saved above expected. He was one of the best in the league for a long time yeah. until it finally gave out there. Uh, to me, Test to me, this has maybe a feel of Fitzgerald wanted to go big with the Markstrom. Yes, for sure. Or could and, that have been the Allmark one? And the analytics Easter department team. won out. You hate that analytics department, eh? I don't, I don't hate it, but I know the battles. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know the battles that go on with teams. And you think it's there in particular? I think there's a disagreement a little bit in that uh, under that roof on, on okay, how much do you want to spend on this position? Mm -hmm. I think it's also, I, I would also believe that in that particular case, it's what you think you should pay for Markstrom. Like, uh, uh, yes. Th that, I, I wonder if that's even the bigger question than what you spend at the position because I heard to Foley. So they traded Toffoli to Winnipeg. I thought the Jets had a great day. I thought they were really good today. But Toffoli, I heard, was looking at a Kalorn-like deal. That's that's kind of what he wanted, and Kalorn's at four times six-ish. And I heard the Devils weren't willing to do term. So, And that's also a very analytically-based decision, Nick. So yeah. I think the bigger question is not so much 
how you're how much you're spending in gold, but what's the price you should pay to trade for Markstrom? Well, the other thing I did here too was Mar Markstrom was all set to go to New Jersey. Yes, and he wanted to go to New Jersey. Yes. He's got a no move. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to go to New Jersey, then why do we have to spend top dollar for him? He wants to come here, and he's got no move, which means so you think New Jersey held. We're in the driver's seat yeah. here. Yeah. I, they they are definitely, I think they definitely believe that. Like, to me, like Fitzgerald said today, this doesn't prevent him from going out and getting someone in the summer. And I, I believe that guy will be Markstrom if it's still available to them. But, you know, one thing that happened this week is Noah Hannafin wanted to go to Tampa. Mm -hmm. And it's going to work out for him very well in Vegas. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him sign an extension there. But he was kind of like, Tampa's my team. That's my one team. Now, he didn't have the no-move club Markstrom had. And Calgary said, you know what? We're going to send you over here instead. So as you know, Nick and Justin, it becomes like a little bit of who's got the – it becomes a little bit of an alpha battle over who's got control. I still think there's a chance he ends up in New Jersey, but we'll see where it all goes. Surprised Rob Blake didn't get a goalie at all. I heard they were. I heard they were looking at Riley Smith. I think they liked the idea of Toffoli. They didn't have much flexibility there. And if this is true, you know he couldn't get Elmark. Saros was not available. I don't know that Markstrom was available. Who else? Like who else are you going to get? Like you know they feel if they play the way they play, you got to find someone who's better than Talbot. Who was available that was better for than Talbot for the price he would have had to pay? Tough day, I think, if you're a Kings fan, though, and you watch Colorado and yes. all the other West teams load up, and you're in the mix going, well, who's going to wipe us in the first round? Like First round of the playoffs in the West is going to be yeah. unbelievable. Which brings me to the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah. They didn't end up doing anything more, obviously doing a lot of their work ahead of time. There's rumors that Phil Kessel might sign with them, but didn't. nothing ends up happening there. Were they trying? And yes. Just, yeah. They were not. They wanted Gensel. They absolutely wanted Gensel, but they didn't have what it would take to get him. Like you look at that package, they they All couldn't do that. Eh? Uh, they weren't willing to give up the prospects that their top prospects that they have. Understandably, I think they were in on Toffoli. Mm -hmm. They I don't know that they were able to beat the price that the Jets gave for Toffoli. And after that, it really sounded like listening to Patrick Alvin. After that, they really didn't like much else that was out there. Look, I I think this Lindholm. Lindholm has had a really rough year. I would not have liked hearing my name getting traded again if I were him. I, I completely agree with that. But you know what? Like, I'm, I'm going to Lindholm and I'm saying, you know, like, it was tough for you in Calgary. It's been tough for you so far in L.A. There's a big contract on the line for you. Like, that's why I like Mantha going to uh, Vegas because he knows that he's been motivated. He's been playing hard. Lindholm has to get going. Mm -hmm. Like, someone has to say to him, you're losing. You're leaving money on the table if you don't really get going here. Yeah, and uh, that's why I think if you're Vancouver, he's the best player available to you. He can, if he can finally figure it out, he can wipe out a a rocky regular season with a fantastic playoff. A thousand percent, a thousand percent, and that's why. Like, and it's 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 in his own best interest. They've got to be saying to him, "You're leaving money on the table if you don't get going." We're talking to Elliot Friedman from Hockey Night in Canada, 32 thoughts and fresh off this year's trade deadline along with Jeff Merrick. Terrific job as always, you two. Elliot, you had mentioned uh, Hannafin and the Tampa Bay Lightning losing out on his services. They go to Matt Dumba. Yeah. They went to Anthony DeClaire. Yeah. Desperate. Like, not exactly... Uh, big names now uh, at this point for the Tampa Bay Lightning? Is this just an organization that's spent, 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 yeah. and have Stanley Cups to show for it, but is this the end of Tampa Bay now being in a position to keep the engine like Boy, really you know greased? Nick, that, that is a great question, and I've been thinking about that a lot. Like Over the years, one of my sayings is, I do not underestimate the Lightning, because mm -hmm. they got a lot of guys going to the Hall of Fame there. But you look at Washington... They're starting to turn down. Pittsburgh, obviously, starting to, to turn down. And I'm wondering about Tampa, too. First of all, they don't have a lot to trade, so that's number one. But number two, it's weird, but 
does it make sense for them to trade their best things right now? Like, like I actually like these two guys as fits to pick up for them. I think Duclair and Dumbo will help them. But the Islanders are two points out with two games in hand. Like, who are you betting on right now? How about Lou doing nothing? Lou's just like, ah, we're fine. I'm sure he tried stuff. Yeah. We'll just never know. Yeah. Like, he's taking that <laughs> with him to the grave. Like, we're just never going to know what he yeah. tried to do. But, like, Nick, like, would you would you swing for the fences now? Or like, like Isaac Howard or whatever else you have? Are you swinging for the fences right now well, if you're Tampa? Didn't, didn't see it. Didn't see the Leafs do the, the, the same thing in terms of having top prospects in their system and a, and a first rounder that I think they offered to Calgary, but didn't spend it. So they offered it. I think they had their first rounder for Tanev and Zadorov. And I wouldn't be surprised, Nick, if they tried individually some other, there, sorry, no, like together for the first before they were traded. Oh, really? Yeah. He, they, they tried to trade for them both. Yeah. And when Zadorov got traded to Vancouver, mm -hmm. they offered their one for both guys. Hmm. And Instead they couldn't of the third. Get it for... Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised, like, uh, like this is purely my opinion, uh, based on what I think they were thinking. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to get both Dowd and Edmondson. Mm -hmm. And they and Washington just said it's going to cost you more than that. Um, speaking of, of Washington, uh, they wanted Kuznetsov out? Yeah, it was time. He wanted to go too. It was time. Okay, and I got into this a little bit with... Uh, uh, JB at the at the top of our show, and I, I'm really surprised that that the, that Carolina would go take a guy like uh, Kuznetsov, who's yep. fresh off the NHL player assistant program. And to me, are they 100 percent sure that this guy's ready to come back and and be a contributor here? How long is it a long shot here, Elliot? That you're taking a chance here, that uh, that he's ready for this challenge? Look, I think when it comes, it's I don't know if I would call it a long shot, but it's a risk. There's there's no question about that. Um, you know, I think it comes down to, Nick, how do you feel about him at $3.9 Because, like, I, I think everybody remembers in 2018, I'm he fine was with an all-world player. I'm fine with the money, Elliot. I just say, I, I've, been in, I've been in dressing rooms that if a guy's not there 100% and... You know, whatever issues that he's had, are they put away now? Are you ready to come in and be part of this team and and play nicely in the sandbox here? That's all. Well, I think he said today, this is my last chance. Like, he knew that, yeah. like, he was put on, like, that. how humbling is that? He got put on mm. waivers. If he were to... But that tells me how much Washington wanted him yeah, out. Yeah, you're, you're, you're making a million now, bucks. And now I'm bringing... But the uh, thing, my, to me, it, the, the it's thing a is bigger you, picture you got to go the through the room first. Like, first of all, there's no question they don't do this without Brendan Moore's approval. And I heard they also talked to some of the players. And they supported it. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. For sure. And if yeah. anybody can, can get this guy, you know, focused, yes. it's Brendan Moore. Mm -hmm. For if sure. If he were to you know, go back into player assistance at some point. Is there complete salary cap relief from that? Is there? Uh, I have to check the rules, yeah. but there are situations where players can come off the cap. I, I have to check. Mm -hmm. Like, he was off their cap this time because I believe it was his second time in the program. Mm -hmm. So I know he was off their cap. I, I don't know it off the top of my head. I have to check. Yeah. But there are situations where there's relief. I mean, the Carolina Hurricanes, obviously, a uh, pretty good deadline. Like, if Kuznetsov can contribute offensively for them, you know, then making another ad, how do you feel about what they I, did? I, like, I think the two best teams in the East are Carolina and Florida. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think they are. I think, you know, the Rangers, I bet they're going to look at this deadline, and uh, they took a swing at Gensel. They weren't willing to put the prospects in that the, range, that the Penguins wanted, so they didn't get them. Yeah. Um, yeah like, Roslovich. Yeah, he's is fine. Yeah. I think they were, it sounds like they were in on patch already, but he didn't go. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they unfortunately struck out in some things they wanted to do. But to me, Carolina and Florida are the best teams in the East. In the West, I think there's six teams that could win the West. Yeah. And the thing about Carolina I really like is last year in the Eastern Conference Final, they lost because they couldn't score. And they have this rule, we don't bend on rentals, we don't pay a lot for rentals. Well, sometimes you've got to change your plan. And this was the year for Carolina to yeah. change their plan. I, I like it. I like what they did. Yeah, Gensel's a, a nice addition for them, for sure. He is. And it's, uh, 
It's a big hole in Pittsburgh here. Oh, yeah. The Penguins, Elliot, losers. Did last night? Of 6 nothing. We did. We played the clip. Oh. Not Large portions of the bottom of, of, the, of the rink were empty yeah. well before uh, the final buzzer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were down. And the then we heard Sid after. We've never heard Sid so dejected, so down. And you just wonder, and listen, the internet, we know what the internet's all about and people talking about Sid going somewhere else. But a lot of those type of nights for Sid, everybody's going to be talking about getting him out of there. Yeah. Like last night. Yeah. Where do you see this thing going? Well, you guys both played at, at a really high level. Like, the one thing I'm thinking last night is, just think about their last week. 3-1 in Calgary with 10 minutes left. They don't even get a point. Yeah. Uh, well, that was the season ender for me. Yeah. Then they get killed in Edmonton. You come home and you play that game. And, I mean, how many times did you guys play where a guy gets traded out of your room who's really popular and you guys go out and get clobbered? Like, they got like that team did not want to play that game last night. Yeah. I don't know how anybody could have expected Crosby to react in any other way. And I think... Nick, one of the real challenges here is that I really think that Pittsburgh's plan was to try to keep Gensel. I think they wanted to trade other people and keep Gensel, but then they realized how bad things were going, and they said, if we really want to get pieces, that's the guy we have to trade. I think it's always... I, I think Crosby knew that this was possible, but then once you actually see it happen, yeah. it's like an arrow through you. Now, I believe that... I don't think there was any chance he was getting traded now... I think they have discussed on some level. Like, I think he knows what the plan is. I think he's filled in. I think he's been told. I think they've talked to him about an extension. <sighs> but, okay, I if, if that's I, like, the but, case. But here's the thing, too, Nick. Like, he, Malkin extended and Latang extended. Yeah. Do you see him walking on these guys? No, 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 I don't. But if he's if he's on board with the plan, yeah. then... You you can't look as down and dejected as he did last night. He I, wore his heart I on his sleeve. Like I, I, I disagree, disagree with you. He, cares. On that. he still cares. Yeah, he's Sidney Crosby. He cares. He's I, I, no, no. He had no hope last night. Yeah. The hope is that we're we're going to make necessary moves to try to get better. And if he's on the program, he's got to start sending that message. And I'm not sure if they're completely on board here moving forward yet. I'm not convinced of that. Yeah. Based on what I saw last night, that doesn't tell me him and Kyle are completely aligned. You know what, Nick? Nick here, uh, may, I mean, that's look, just my opinion. Yeah, that's that's all. fine. But here, here's the reason I, I don't overreact to last night. Like, again, you play at a really high level. Just imagine what a room is like. Gensel gets traded and, you, and you, your asses get kicked like that. Any player who cared would react like that in that moment. I can't tell you how many dress rooms I've gone into and seen a player react like that. I guess the question I, I, at the I, heart I, of this, though, is is Sidney Crosby going to leave the pink? I don't think so. I could always be wrong. I don't, I, think, I don't so. think so either. I think he wants to be like Mario, start with one team. You just think team. he doesn't like the new regime and no, they're off to a no, bad start. No, no, I'm not. I'm just I'm saying it's okay. It's all right to... To, to think that you want to retire a penguin, yeah. but if if he's experiencing something that even his head couldn't match the, the disappointment in him and you're still competitive and you're still a 90-point guy a year, I think the wheels are turning right now on him a little bit. You know what's different, too, about this is that for the first time since he's been there, really, I, when they started to turn and go up, this is the first time in maybe what? 15, no, even more, like 16, 17 years where their manager didn't believe they were good enough to win. Right, where in other years they a, just missed. Every other year, like, they they added or they went for it or they kept yeah. everybody. Yeah. This is the first time in, like, 17 years where the manager said, you're not good enough. Well, they say it's it's the worst in Pittsburgh that it's been before he got there. The, I think the worst part is the the hope factor where you look around and you go all the guys we needed to be good were pretty good yeah and now what you know like you're not guaranteed to get 90 from sid next year you're not guaranteed to get good goals and sid's not guaranteed that the team won't be worse well that's what i'm saying and right? so to me and i am not an insider like the two of you if oh, it looks like it's going to get me. 
if it looks like it's going to get worse and I'm competitive and I want to win cups. Mm. It's something to think about. Yeah. Right? I think he stays. I don't think he, I, I don't think, after those two other guys extended, I can't see him walking. I could be wrong. That's the way I see it. Yeah. Fair enough. Move on from Sid. Yeah. Um, outside of that, uh, any other surprises for you f- uh, throughout the day on, on some teams being quiet here? St. Louis. Yeah, Buchnevich didn't go. Yeah. He Although was very D- expensive. Yeah, Doug Armstrong seemed to indicate not a lot was going on. Ottawa. Yeah, I the thought chicken thing didn't so happen. So quiet. And Ottawa, I thought, might. I, th- I think they were trying to add. I think they were actually trying to add maybe a veteran player. Did Ottawa was surprised me a little bit. The, um, the Rangers. Ottawa fans not loving Tarasenko going for the picks he did. Oh, and come nothing on. Else like, happening. You know, I know he was. It's his right to pick. His, he picks one team. What are you going to do? Well, and you have the option right. to do what you said with Hannafin, where you say either you go somewhere else or you don't go at all. You know, you This can, is different. Yeah. I think that was a little I bit agree. different. I don't think I, there's. Listen, I agree that he got what he could and they did fine by it. But yeah. I, I think fans don't necessarily feel as positive about it. Yes. We, we, we've seen the, the trend the last few years, Elliot, of deals getting done like on a Tuesday or Wednesday yeah. instead yeah. of a Friday yeah. here. Is it strictly because of the, the salary cap being locked in and no growth there? Will it open up once the I think cap it's going to open up? up this summer and next Will year? Will we start seeing teams push the envelope yeah. up until 3 p.m.? Like we saw... Hurdle and uh, Vegas. Well, you remember Vegas? Like, they've used... Vegas has done this several times. I was thinking about this after. They used that 3 o'clock deadline to... Remember? For no reaction from other clubs. Well, also, just as a pressure point. Like, um, you remember when they traded for Mark Stone? It was like a 257. And today, I think they... Like, uh, there was... San Jose had another player, Barabanov, the winger. They were trying to trade him, and they thought they were going to do it. And then all of a sudden, they only have one retention spot left. Yeah. And Vegas is like, hey, if you want to do hurdle, you know, here it is right at the end. And, you know, Vegas Vegas is very good at that. They use that 3 o'clock deadline. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and deadlines spur action. I, I, I think they do. I mean, I wish everybody was like Jim Rutherford where he came out and said, all right, it's it's." It's it's uh, December. I'm ready to make my trades, but not everybody is like him. Yeah. You know, I, I'm hoping Nick with the cat. And, and the other thing too, Nick, is I've heard there have been some pretty aggressive salary cap projections, depending on who's doing them over the next few years. And I'm really hoping that loosens up everything. Is there not a max growth per year, or can it? There, there. No, I mean five percent. Well, no, the, the the cap can go up whatever. There's an escalator. Yeah. That the but. The, the cap goes up whatever the revenues are. Okay. But also don't forget that when they redid it over COVID, there were some different links and changes. Which but they that didn't eventually maximize changed. The, the escalator, I think. They uh, they used to do it all yes, the time. all the time. They used to do it all the time. Put as much money as you can in the system, yes. and that also caused high escrow. Yeah. So it yeah. was but I've heard sword. there are some pretty, like some teams and, and, and have some pretty bold predictions about where it's going. I don't know if it's going to be right or wrong. But there are some teams apparently that have some pretty bold predictions. You heard it here I first. Lisa so. are going to extend Tavares 11 mil, three more years. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam just woke up over there. What did you think, what did you think of their uh, their deadline, Toronto? You know, I I said uh, when we were on the show earlier, I think it is at best a tepid endorsement by the GM who's watched this team and said, I know I can't sell here, but I don't necessarily believe this is a team that I want to pour a bunch of assets into. So I think they were a little hesitant. There's, I still like the team a lot yeah. um, and feel like these guys will help. But There's nothing that happened for the Toronto Maple Leafs that will make people feel any differently about them going in as, I don't want to say big underdogs against Boston or Florida, mm-hmm. whoever they end up with, but they are underdogs. They are playing the underdog card for the first time in a while here, and you hope that it could be at their advantage. But it's also the first year where they're not saying, okay, let's look around and see if the new guys fix it. You know, where it's like, it's you, 34 and 16 and 88 and 91. It's you, your team, go ahead. So I I almost like the change in pressure there. You know, I have to say, the one thing that surprised me about all this is that in a lot of ways, this should be the most likable Toronto team in a long time. 
They, oh, they're vicious out there now. But you know, but, Tavares but, but think about it. Matthews. But but think about it. They've been they turned like in in goal. It's been insane. Yeah. Like look look like no. Have any teams have as crazy has crazy goaltending as Toronto has this year? And also on defense, they've had a revolving door of injuries and suspensions too. Like I think in a lot of ways, they've actually kind of punched above their weight this fair. year. Totally and, fair. And, but uh, you know, people are. So mad. People are still mad so at four mad. Year yeah. ago I don't get it. I don't get it. And they, they, they lost uh, Lag La uh, Legacy. 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 Yeah. Leaf waiver claims Just continue. Little, yeah. Another des uh, depth guy, I you know? Him. Yeah. I like Lagerson, I thought this year there were times he was hugely important. Yeah. He's a one-way yeah. NHL yeah. player to me. Yeah, I think he's a good player. All right, pal, we're we gonna let you go and eat or sleep or what do you sleep. do? What do you do after a trade deadline? Uh, I'm, I gotta, we gotta work tomorrow. We gotta show tomorrow, so I'm gonna sleep. Oh, yeah, you'll be on your A game on that one. <laughs> ah, what happened? What happened? You know what, Nick? I gotta tell you, there were a couple of the times this week. Like I put out one tweet where I said. Nashville claims Anderson Dolan from Nashville. Like, I had a couple this week that I was like, I am on the precipice of disaster here. Okay, like, at the end of the day, like, if you didn't tweet that... No, Nick, I'm sorry. Would it, would it matter? No, no, you know what, Nick? You you did this job, okay? <laughs> like, I know you. You know me. Yes. And you can break all the ones you, you want, but the one that you don't get bothers you the most. But you're a wily. You're past that now. You're nah, like a king right now. No, you got your don't chair. Like you're like, like no. you call your shots. No. You should be looking it, at that going, that's that's not Elliot Friedman worthy, that transaction no i don't I, that's not the way it works at all you want to win you you, you you remember the ones you don't get not the you ones are you do. you're awesome at what you do and uh, congratulations on a great day thanks guys thanks okay. Okay. Appreciate your time, man. and i look forward to the 25th carolina that's our next regional right yeah we got a couple of carolina week. that's a big one yeah uh are we gonna dress the same again i get notes that we dress <laughs> every together day the same. brian burke just text two ugly shirts <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, pal. Oh, look at Elliot's. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Berkey, look at this, the shirt Elliot's hey, wearing. Don't mock Shea. Don't mock Shea. <laughs> All right. MVP. Elliot Friedman, everybody, from Hockey Night in Canada and 32 Thoughts. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And when we're back, we'll welcome back in Sammy on Real Kipper and Born. Bringing it home on trade deadline day on the Real Kipper and Born show. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. I had, had a soundbite for Elliot that I cut, and I forgot to play it for him. <laughs> what was it? Derek, do we have it? Nothing. Just him saying nothing? Nothing. Well, that was, there's more to that. <laughs> he cut the word nothing? <laughs> it was David. Nice, Elliot. guys. We have some news breaking. Nice, guys. Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick. What do you have? Nothing uh, official yet, oh. I think. Okay. No. Yeah. no Still not. That went over like a lead balloon. I just told them to cut uh, David Amber <laughs> saying, we have breaking news. We're going to throw it over to Elliot. What do you have for us? Nothing. And then he says nothing. <laughs> and then it was supposed to end. Well, by nation. And it was a... And it was a hell of a lot more funny than what they just played. I assure they, you. They got to get you a set of yuck yucks tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was nothing. nothing. There was nothing. We get Buddy, it. if my producer was oh, spe watching golf... Go. All afternoon. I wasn't watching golf. I was right on top of everything. <laughs> I would not. Me? Watching golf? Why is a young buck like you not that interested in the trade deadline shows anymore? I used to love I the know. trade deadline show. What happened? X ruined it. I It's like the, I can just scroll on my phone. I, I was locked in every day because be, somebody on TV would be telling me. This is what's happening, and I just be like, eh, I'll we watch, were, I'll watch hey, golf. Once upon a time, oh, we, yeah. were the, we were kings. We were the kings. <laughs> it was awesome. Do we uh, have the other king with us is today? Matt, do we have Mac? I don't think we do yet. No, we're no, getting, he's. We're, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna get Doug McLean. He's just. Uh, I don't know. He's probably pissed. It's six thirty. The guy's probably had a dinner reservation. Yeah, that's it's right. late at night now. Hey, he's gonna he's, he's gonna oh, he's gonna be he's is. gonna be pissed right yeah, now. I can tell. He's that's a Lululemon oh, hoodie. Right what there. is going on? Nice one. Let's welcome in Doug McLean, your favorite on Off the Rails Friday. Former NHL president, GM, and now world renowned author. And um, and uh, I don't know what else can I say about you. That's pretty well. Well, I'm a lecturer at. Uh, 
uh, you know, the University of Colorado or wherever it is, Concordia, you know. So let me ask you, on a, on a day like today, trade deadline day, do you miss the action of, besides me, calling you and bugging you? You know, I, I, I gave you a couple of the deals last night that I thought would happen. And after that, I, you know, I was trying to help you out, um, you know, with... Uh, <laughs> you know, what Dubas was going to do and a couple of things like that. But I, you know, I, overall, I, I really didn't, I, I can't say I like it as much as Elliot. I, I, I really can't say. Wow. Well, like that's his bread and butter. As as Elliot. That's yeah, his bread and butter. He, he, yeah. He makes his name. I mean, you used to be one of those guys. Yeah, but I you used know what? To. It, it was, look, it was a fun week, you know, I mean, Jimmy Rutherford started off on a, on a nice note and Vegas ended on a nice note, you know? So, uh, Hey, uh, I never, ever envisioned that injuries would become the critical part of trade, trade deadline day. And it's overwhelmed everything else. If you're injured and you're on LTI, it's, your team can improve themselves. And if you're on LTI, they can trade for you. It's unbelievable. You were, you're speaking of Vegas here. Now, yeah, yeah and I don't, hey, I, I, I got to tell you one thing. When I heard Hurdle went there, I was blown away. Just a minute, he's injured. But they did their homework and full marks to Vegas. I know they're going to have a $120 million payroll, but they did their homework. So I thought it was a good move. Find the loophole. Yeah, find the loophole and don't whine about it. Everybody's got fair opportunity. And the league, don't whine about it. You guys missed the loophole when you were setting up the cap. You missed it. And now... You win a cup with $120 million payroll. Imagine playing, imagine Edmonton and Vegas now in the first round. Mm -hmm. Two teams that I thought had great deadline. I love what Edmonton did with Henrik. I really do. I like the little fourth line centerman they got, Carrick. And I like Sketcher. He's a competitive depth guy. I like what they did. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, and Edmonton won't be easy to beat, guys. They will not be easy to beat. So that'll be a great series. And um, Pittsburgh, what do you I think? Feel bad for Kyle, you know. I, I, well, I mean, I'm sorry, Sid. You feel bad for Sid? No, I feel bad Sid. for Kyle because Sid's mad at him. <laughs> 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 Which is, you know, kind of unusual. But I mean, I, 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 I happen to watch the Chicago Wolves a little bit. I had watched the guy they got, the kid they got as a as a prospect, I didn't really like, I wasn't in love with their prospects, but I don't know them that well. Bunting, I'm not a fan of. I, I know Kyle likes them. And I know he's like, to me, on a one to seven rating in the NHL, a seven being a franchise player and one being a guy you don't want. To me, he's a four and a half. And they got a six for him. They got an impact player for him. A guy that scores big goals, can play with good players. I, I like what Carolina did a lot. And Kuznetsov, that makes me a little nervous out of their character, but the guy can play. But Mantha, big body guy with 20 goals. Hannafin shows up and plays the other night because he really wants to be there. And then they pick up her. I mean, look, that's a that's a great day for, for Kelly. Uh, I want to read you a, a Tom Fitzgerald quote. And uh, just talking about Markstrom, he says uh, he doesn't mince words on the goalie market. There is a market. People performing have set that market. All I'm trying to do is be fair in that market. But you also need a team um, that wants to make fair deals rather than extorting you for every big asset you have. Uh, talking presumably about Craig Conroy and what they were trying to get for Markstrom. How do you feel about... Like, are GMs trying to do fair trades? This helps me, this helps you. Or are you trying to go out there and win a trade, trying to get a, all you can out of a guy? Look, I, I talked to Lindy after he got fired the other night. He said, you know, it's kind of frustrating. We outshoot the team 55-33 and we lose 3-1 in my last game I coached. What's that tell you? I mean, where, where – and, hey, I love Tommy Fitzgerald. He played for me. He's a quality person. I think the world of him. But this should have been done two months ago. Mm. The goaltending situation, if, you're, if you think you're a playoff contender, which they were, and I know they had some tough injuries, I get that. But look, you, you can't let it go to this late. 
to try to get a gold hitter. I thought it should have been done two months ago. And it cost him a playoff spot, in my opinion. So, you know, tough beans. That's just the way it goes, you know. And I know the goalie market's tough. And I know Markstrom, you know, it fell through the cracks for whatever reason. But, uh, and maybe Tommy did work for a couple of months to try to get it. But he didn't get it done. Colorado catch me a little Okay, oh, hold on. Just one more question on the goaltending in New Jersey. And uh, Jake Allen, is yeah. this... Is this to to ease the pain of the last twenty games for the likes of Luke Hughes? You you, you trying to protect him a little bit here? You know what? It, I don't I don't understand why you would take Jake Allen. I mean, if you didn't you didn't get is Jake going to get them in the playoffs? What are they out of the playoffs right now? And how many? No, teams they're not. They they're they're, they're not going to make it. They're but, not. No, but why would you bring in Jake? Well, Allen? just to settle why? these guys down, though, so they don't get buried, they don't get their heads caved in. The last twenty games—that's the only thing I can think of. I, that's the only thing. Well, you've thought of it, and there's no sense me commenting on it. I—I I thought it was a wasted acquisition, yeah, a I'm wasted guessing. couple of phone calls, a wasted couple of phone calls getting Jake Allen for me. And I like mm -hmm. Jake, but I, I don't—I don't see any value in it. What is your deadline experience like, Doug? Like, did you do any sort of uh, deals at the last second there? How much did you enjoy being a part of the frenzy le leading up to the final minutes? You know what? It was always a fun time. You know, you have your group together in the war room and, you know, the calls are coming. You know, my a lot of my experience was getting rid of money, which was really a frustrating part of the job. Yeah. It's like, okay, you know, we've got to, We've got to get rid of Sanderson's money. We've got to get rid of Sador's money. You know, like coming from coming from the top, and that that bothered me. But it was still a, a fun time at trade deadline. We made lots of moves, and it was it was it's an exciting time. It's not the draft, but it certainly is one of the great days of the year for a general manager. And it starts when you start your with your pro meetings a month before the deadline, and it follows right through. So look some. Some teams did some great things. I mean, I look at Carolina. They've got a chance. Florida have improved their team with a couple of subtle moves. Uh, lots of teams improve themselves. Like, who who's coming out of the West, guys? Like, how many teams? I'll tell you, somebody who did a great job at the deadline, and nobody's talking about them, I don't think, is Calgary Flames. Yeah. With what they were up against, with what Co Co Craig was up against, Conroy, and what he came out of it with prospects, full marks to Calgary and they will not be an easy out even the rest of the year, the way this team plays, they play hard. Uh, Byron for Casey Middlestat. You like that one? I, I, no, I, I, I've never been. And I look, I, I love Chris McFarland. He was with me for 11 years in Columbus. I think the world of him. Byron, what happened to him? I, I thought he was going to be a superstar. I really did. Well, he had I injuries thought, early. My, I know he had a lot of injuries this year. Middlestad has always been in and out for me. Uh, he he's looks like a superstar one night, and you can't find them the next night. Um, you know, they thought they did great things bringing in Ryan Johansson. Like, are you serious? I mean, they, and then they have to give a first-round pick to get rid of him, to get him out of there. Like, I mean, I know they got Walker back, but seriously, they're they gonna, have to give up a first-round pick. Gonna, they're going to buy him out this summer. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But I'm saying they had to give up a first round pick to move them along. I mean, with Walker, I get that, you know, to, to acquire Walker, but that, that was a disaster. So I don't know where, where that goes. Byron to me, I mean, it gives Buffalo a pretty good look on their back end for me. If he gets through the injury, you know, bug. So, and look, maybe, maybe uh middle stat will go in there and be a star. He's had a good year, but he's been way too inconsistent for me in his career. And is he a number two guy? That's what they think he is. I'm not sure he's. He, I'm not sure he's the guy at playoff time. That's all. Is is Gensel enough to make Carolina fans believe that they can go toe to toe with Florida or or the Boston Bruins? Oh, that's a that's a really tough one. They've got a good team, but but what has cost Carolina the last couple of years at playoff time? What, what has been there? I know they. The goalies. Yeah, what else? The goalies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The goalies. The goalies. Which one of three is going to play? Who's no, going to no. play? Freddie. You know? Flip a coin. So that, to me, is bothersome. Um, you know, you love Aho. You, you love their team. You love their coaching staff. 
You like their blue line. Um, I don't think they're as good as Florida, but, you know, they're they're a pretty good team. And Gensel will fit in really well with Ajo or whoever he's with. He, he'll be a – because he scores big goals at critical times. So I like what they did, but, I, I mean, can they come out of the East? Flor- Look, you never know, guys. Boston lost in the first round last year when they had a 3-1 series late. We don't know what's mm-hmm. going to happen in the playoffs. And every year it goes south. If Bobrovsky goes south in Florida, which he's capable of doing, all bets are off. They're all capable but, you know, of it. They're all capable. Vasilevsky, now, Shesterkin's team, not money in the bank anymore in New York. No. And and Wenberg, like Columbus couldn't wait to get rid of Wenberg for whatever reason. Then he goes to Seattle. He's a pretty solid guy. You know, you like what he brings, but the Rangers, to me, didn't do enough. Didn't do enough to get it done. So, um, but look, who knows? Winnipeg had a pretty good day. Chevy had a pretty good day, guys, you know? Pat Maroon went to Boston. They going to beat up on the Leafs in round one or what? They didn't need Maroon to beat up on the Leafs. (laughs) Oh, the Leafs held their own. They were, they, they... They showed more than they have in the past, Mac, as far as the, the foot soldiers out there. I don't know about the Stars last night. but They were outscored 9-2 in two games. What do you mean they held their own? <laughs> what are you talking about? They held their own. They held on to each other in a couple of skirmishes. But they sure as hell didn't hold on. Good God. What are you talking about? All right, all right. I know Marner got his, but Marner got points, so you're happy. Marner scored a nice goal. And then Beautiful goal, yeah. kind of limped off and the ice. Hey, listen, I, I liked what uh, Bourne said there a little earlier. You know, this is the team. This is they, they maybe that maybe maybe with no pressure, maybe with no pressure, they'll get it done in the first round. I, I hey, I'll tell you what. I'm not saying it would not surprise me. That Toronto beats Boston in the first Ooh. round. It would not surprise. Even after you just lambasted me. For your nine two, when it was really eight two, score. The playoffs are di- the playoffs are a different season, Nick. You know that. All right. You know. You confident I'm trying that, to be th- that Willie trying to be thoughtful here. Willie Nylander can can go toe to toe with Pasternak. I know phys- physically he can't, but can he go they, as far as being as dangerous? They screwed up. They should have got Alex Nylander. You got a hat trick there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he did not score. Jay da- John Davidson's biggest trade in his career. Alex Nylander, Bumstrom, Bumstrom, or Bemstrom, or whatever his name is. Anyway. Hey, how do you feel about a anyway. team like Nashville buying assets at the deadline here when, you know, they're Nashville? I, I was blown away by that. Yeah. I really was. I'm trying to think, what? why? Wait till the summer and, you know, but, but, Barry, you know, Barry said he's a first-time GM. I'll tell you who surprised me at the deadline was Lou Lamorello. Yeah, quiet. I, 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 quiet. And and their team is right there. They're right there. They're playing well. They got games in hand, and they're right there to make the playoffs. So I, that surprised me a little bit. Roslovic to the Rangers? Why? <laughs> Why would they do well, that? They were, I think Somebody they, help me with that one. I think they were sniffing on Vitrano. In I would have taken. Oh, I would have taken Jeff. No. I would have taken Jeff. The Rangers should have taken Jeff Rimmer ahead of Russell. Oh. He must get paid for Jeff Rimmer playoff. drop. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, he he, he should have dropped you years ago as a friend. I'm telling. I'm going to call him up right now and say that's enough. That's enough. If he would have dropped, but listen, if he would have dropped me as a friend. He wouldn't have got the job in Columbus because <laughs> he drove me crazy. He, you know, you ever heard the story, eh? During the lockout, Florida were paying him two hundred and fifty dollars a week, and you know how important money is to Jeff. <laughs> and he phoned me every day. Can you believe they're only paying me two hundred and fifty dollars a week? So I said, Jeff, I felt sorry for him, and I hired him, and I gave him five hundred a week during the lockout, <laughs> and he was happy as a clam. And now, and now, now they're going to honor him. As the great, he's the new Danny Galvin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Columbus. Foster Hewitt. Foster, Foster Hewitt. Hewitt. <laughs> anyway. I, that guy's just, he's, 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 
Poor Jeff River takes Jeff more River. strays on this show. We're going to do an off the rails uh, Friday with you and Jeff. Just Jeff. <laughs> no, just Jeff. And then he's just going to just rip you. Okay, listen. I'm avoiding him because I do not want to get invited to his retirement ceremony. <laughs> I, went in, I went in for Nash. I don't want to go in for him. I don't. You're the guest of honor, for sure. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, you, 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 anyway. Do, do you miss... Do you miss trade deadline day at Sportsnet with me? Because once upon a time, me, you, and Millard did some fun things, including, uh-oh, I'm going to throw to Derek Brindale for a, another clip. Do you have it, Derek? No? Oh, my gosh. I'm 0 for 2. It was I, our – it was the, the – the, I missed – I missed the deadline so much today <laughs> that I almost missed coming on because I had forgot all about it. That's how much I missed it. It was, I, I wanted them to play me, you, uh, when, uh, when Darren's with the George Strombo thing that we did where you said, uh, they said Nick Kipris got traded and all you said was, thank God for who? <laughs> and the flip phone. That's you remember the flip phone? That was my only line I had. <laughs> well, listen, sports that they don't resort to that stuff now. They don't need that. They're so good right now. They don't need us doing like SNL skits. That's for sure. Uh, I right. may not go that far, but I'm not going to say anything. We got to go. Yeah, you better hey. get me off the air quick. Great, get me off quick. Great before I say something. E even Cut on the transmission. Even on trade deadline day, you could just drive it in the ditch once again. I know. Thanks for doing you know, this, it Doug. Was a, it was a boring day for me. All right. Take care, guys. Th hey, hey, guys, thanks for having me on. I really Yeah, you're welcome. It. All right. Thanks, go, Mac. Go, go to your wine. Go to your beach. Mm. Go to your Porsche. Go to your RV. He's nuts. That was mine. Just killing Jeff Rimmer. I hate... People even know who Jeff Rimmer is. No, he's, he's the Columbus play by, Blue, and Blue Jackets play-by-play play by play. Play guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's insane. I wouldn't if it wasn't for Doug McLean, but I'm glad I do. And we're going to have Rimmer on now. Yeah, let's have him on 100%. with him. Let's do a like a like a Zoom chat with all of us. And then, Adler and Waldorf and we'll just, up there. Just, <laughs> they will. They'll, they'll be like the, uh, the, the, the old puppets on the Muppets. Yeah. The old guys. The old puppet Muppet. Yes, the old puppet. But right. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm pretty much spent today. This uh, is really strange. The the extra hour we yeah. came in, we did a hit for the the trade deadline day, yeah. which was you know good. Fabulous. But it's just really my rhythms off, as you can tell. I'm calling for stuff that's not coming in. Oh. That's just not me. I'm a pro. You are, but you know the league has been reorganized. We'll come back here on Monday, regroup. A lot, a lot of hockey words this week. Yes, a lot, a lot of hockey games, words. radio, all that. It's been good. Yep. All right. How many games did you say on tap tonight? Four tonight. And next year, you'd rather have no games on trade deadline. That's what you told me. It doesn't really care. matter. Don't care. Well, because you watch golf anyways. Oh, here we go. Got a chef like Buddy, it's the Arnold Palmer. It's the first big one of the year. Let's go. All right. Our thanks to Brad Tree Living, general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Doug McLean. Freege. And Freege. Freege. <laughs> yep. Gotcha. Yeah, you got me. How come he, you got to look after me better like oh, my buddy JB. Go. Oh, it's Friday. Sammy. Be nicer. Who cares? <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody. If you Thanks. get a chance, give us a rating and review. Love to hear from you. And we're back on Monday on The Real Kipper and Born Show.